We're at Kirkbride in the far northwest corner of England, where the Cumbria Power Weekend and Truck Show is hosting the first round of the 2018 BTPA Tractor Pulling Championship. We've got record hot temperatures and a full schedule of championship classes to pull over the next two days. Over the next five programmes, we're going to be bringing you all the action from the 2018 season, including some great ETPC Metis Euro Cup action from the August Bank Holiday Great Eccleston Pool. But for this programme, we're looking at some of the home classes, Pro Stock, Super Sports, Super Farm, Limited Pro Stock, Light Modified, plus a demonstration competition featuring some of Europe's best Super Stock tractors, and we'll be pulling over the 90 metre track. We're starting off with the standard looking hood style tractors. The entry level for these is the Super Farm class, which was won last season by Martin Ross from Scotland. We've already had one round for this class a couple of weeks ago at the Angus show in Scotland, and this was also won by Martin Ross. Well, uh, yeah, it was a fantastic end of the season. Um, we all, the whole team worked really, really hard to get to where we needed to last year, um, British champions. So uh, yeah, this season, um, onwards and upwards, I think at the end of the day, um, all the other tractors, teams in the in the class will be uh, you know in the same position, wanting to be British champion. Um, we just try, need to try and keep ahead of them, you know. We've trimmed a bit of weight here or there. We've made uh, an adjustment to allow for a bit more movable weight and probably where we want the weight more um, than what we've had in current years. Um, generating more power, uh, possibly ever so slightly, but nothing major. Um, it went well last season. I didn't want to interfere too well much. You know. Well, this is Martin on track with his machine called Diesel Ross. And for those of you new to the sport, we'll be explaining some of the technicalities as we go along. But for now, suffice to say, the object is to drag the heavy weighted sledge as far up that track as you possibly can. And he's flying down the track. Martin's done that with no problem at all, passing the 90 metre full pool line with ease. 103 metres, in fact. Now, if the other competitors in the class also make full pools, then we will have a pull off to decide the overall winner. Next out on track is the Case 955 base tractor, Red Bull, driven by David Todd. So the machine is coupled up to the sledge and he waits the green flag from the track marshals. Then build up the boost and get that tractor moving. David's off and running. Getting a little bounce coming on in there. He seems to drive through it well and gets all the way to 96.9 metres, so another full pull, we will have a pull-off. Next man out is Ewan Cameron, also from Scotland. Ewan, the old faithful Smokey 2 here at Kirkbride. Yeah, I'm down here again to drive our best, see how we got on, Tom. Brilliant. Um, looking for good things today? Uh, we've changed a few things in the winter time, so hopefully we'll get a bit more of it this year. Been sneaking a few more horses out of that block. Aye, hopefully. Hopefully they've got big legs as well. But something's not quite right with the tractor there and being dragged down right at the start. Well, that was just 25.91 metres, but because he didn't pass the 30 metre line, he can have another attempt. And no doubt they'll be looking to select a different gear this time. Well, it sounds much stronger, far more revs. Well, that's quite a scenic route being taken, but it seems to be going the distance. He passes the chequered flag full pool line, and yes, 99.09 metres. He's into the pull-off. Next machine out is Jim Peary with Green Envy. Well, this is his second attempt after a first 21.59 metres pull, and this seems to be going far better. There's a strict 3,000 RPM limit in this class with just a single turbo allowed. Typical power is between 5 and 700 horsepower, still considerably more than the stock machines ever had. And a final distance of 92.95 metres makes him the fourth driver into our pull-off. One to go now, and this is Drew Allen with Mission Impossible. He's pulled straight over to the right-hand side of the track on this attempt, just 14.7 metres for Drew. So we're into the pull-off, and the sledge will have more weight added to make it harder to pull. 
So let's see what Martin Ross can do this time. Well, he's looking strong as ever, no sign of stopping, and way past the full pool line, 108 metres. That certainly sets the bar very high for the rest of them. But can David Todd match that with Red Bull? Martin looking very pleased there. Looks like he thinks that was good enough. Well, David is actually the organiser for this event and would love nothing more than to win it in front of his home fans. There's that little bounce again. But still going strong and passing the chequered marker with ease. Another full pull, 102.59 metres. You on camera next with Smokey 2. Up in the air there, taking quite a scenic route. That'll cost him at the end of the pull. The big weight box in the sled moves forwards as the run progresses to put more and more load right on the tractor. So the quicker and more direct you get there, the better. Just short of the chequered flag though, 89.34 metres. And Ewan also having to apply the independent rear brakes to bring that machine back straight it also cost him a bit of distance. Jim Pirry with Green Envy is the final competitor. Well, this is looking a lot straighter than Smokey 2. Oh, but he's been dragged down already to record just 77.07 metres, which means that we still have two tractors on full pulls. So it's still not decided, and that means that Martin and David will have to come out for a final super pull-off to decide the winner. Moving up a level now to the limited pro stock class with anything between 1,000 and 1,500 horsepower on tap. This is an incredibly competitive class with the win in 2017 going to the True Blue team. We've already had one round for this class up at the Angus show with True Blue again taking the win and the early points lead. Uh, yeah, we've uh, over the winter we've made way into making a completely new chassis for the tractor uh, just for getting more weight forward really uh, we've always found as the tractor progresses we need to get more weight on the nose of the tractor so uh, we've made made a serious change to well the look of the tractor in general uh, see a huge change to it like i say it's just basically to get more weight on the nose different tire pressures a different balance from what it was it feels the same to drive but we're hoping it'll make a difference uh, as the other boys were getting closer, so you know we had to do something. So as we move into the first pools for the limited pro stocks, first man out on track is Chris Wilkinson with the Lancashire Bomber. Unlike the previous Super Farm class, there's no limit on RPM in this class, which means much more wheel speed and more power. There is, however, a limit on engine capacity compared to the unlimited pro stocks that we'll be seeing later. Storming all the way to the full pool line. 101.84 is the final distance. Well, the first machine out in each new class is designated the test puller. If the sledge operators are not happy that they've got the weight settings correct for the class, they might add or remove weight. But at the same time, the test puller can elect to have a second attempt further down the running order. But in this case, the sledge is set and Chris is more than happy with that result. Next man out is Graham Ward with chain reaction. Not quite the initial wheel speed of the Lancashire bomber, but he's getting down the track. Passing the chequered flag for a full pull, 99.54 metres. It's red missed out next, driven by Stuart Noblet. Pull it to the left-hand side there to begin with, but getting it strained up and nicely into the track now. 
96.39 metres, so that's three into the pull-off already. Neil Gullen with the gambler next. Green flags down the track. And he starts to get it boosting. But it's not really getting there. Oh well, but because he didn't pass the 30 metre flag, he gets a second attempt. Well, this looks a bit better this time. Oh, but no, still no pull-off slot today for Neil. Shame. The skinny necks driven this year by Onky Anchors. The machine put in some great performances last year when driven by Julie Anchors, so let's see how he can get on. He's on boost. But no, oh, looks like it's jumped out of gear. Oh, though when you look at it, that's oil that it's left behind. I think something has given way in the transmission. True Blue up next, we heard from the team earlier. They're always a favourite, and as they said, they've made some major changes to the tractor this year. And it's obviously working, because that's another full pull. 103.2 metres for True Blue. Next out will be the going bus machine of Michael Winterbottom and Michael Flaherty. but not looking too successful today and getting only 24.58 metres on their second attempt. So they won't be joining the four already in the pull-off. Major Madness now, driven by Ed Bateman. Bit of a slow start, but the wheels are up and he's gaining some forward momentum. Another full pull, 93.4 metres to give us five tractors through so far. Final map now, it is Mark Jones. Will it make it? I'm Mark, just new to the BTPA this year with this tractor called Will It Make It? First time out, we've had it a few years in independent clubs and thought we'd just come out this time. We've got a sponsor of LWT, give us some money and friends and family. So we've had it all built, just had a few few crank problems, kept picking up on the shells. Thought we'd solve that issue, took it out again and we hadn't. So whole new engine in it today, different settings. We've not even pulled with this setup, so we just hope we can get away from the line. And it might be his first outing with the BTPA, but lots of pulling already under his belt. And this one looks like it's going all the way. Yes, that's six in the pull-off. And the distance? 99.67 metres. On to the pull-off then, and we keep the same running order, which means Chris Wilkinson with Lancashire Bomber comes out first. There'll be more weight in the sledge now, so they should be pulled up earlier. Although we saw in the super farm earlier, this isn't always the case. Chris gets it moving nicely. He seems to be flying. And he sets the mark at 78.37 metres. Next man out is Graham Ward with Chain Reaction. Bit of a slow start for him. But he's gaining some momentum now. Oh, he's just getting dragged down with the sledge. 61.15, the final distance. Stuart Noblet with Red Mist out next. He's having to work hard to keep it straight. Looks like he's beaten Chain Reaction. And a distance of 64.99 puts him in second place at the moment. And next up, it's a 2017 champion, True Blue, driven by Ross Forrest. Oh, getting a bit of a bounce on there. He's looking for the chequered flag that marks Chris's distance. 
Oh, and he's pulled up just short at 76.89. Oh, that's good for second place. For now. With Ed Bateman and Major Madness not making it back out, the final competitor will be Mark Jones with Will It Make It? Good boost. And he's away. Looking straight here. Well, he's pulled up at 68.95 metres. That's third place for the day. So as Chris Brown with Dark Addiction takes to the track for an out-of-session test, confirmation that Lancashire Bomber, driven by Chris Wilkinson, has taken the win. The Dark Addiction failed to make it out in competition with mechanical problems, but putting on a spectacular show here like so many of the tractors being pulled over to the left-hand side of the track today. So that win for Lancashire Bomber puts them on even points with the True Blue team. This is certainly one of the most competitive classes at the moment in British tractor pulling. Yeah, it seemed to go all right. It, it can go either way. And like we've said for quite a, a number of uh, events now, that it could be any of six, seven tractors in that, that class now. It, it's a good competitive class. They're all going well, and just yesterday was our day. It's one of those. You don't feel that you're sort of pulling out a few extra metres, it's just really on the day still? Yeah, it's still on the day. It's just, we've got the power there, and it's just reading the track and trying to get it weighted right. And like I say, on the day, it, it, that's the difference. There's not a lot of difference in power between each tractor. It's just getting it right on the day. It can go either way. Final results then are just two metres between first and second place. And in the points, it's even closer with both teams equal on 35 points. And for the record, it's based on the tractor, not the driver. So teams can have several drivers across the season. Coming up soon are the light modifieds. And it's over to Tom Beatty. So one of the key classes here at Kirkbride this afternoon has to be the light modified class. It was a fantastic championship last time in the BTPA Championship and here at Kirkbride it's the first round. Dan, you were the champion of the light modified last year in the British Championship. You went on to the Europeans and did okay in the light modified, did better in the modified class. So yeah. you've got a lot to, you know, they'll all be chomping at your bits, chomping after you this afternoon, won't they? Yeah, well, I hope it's a good tight class again and we all have a good run, but hopefully we can repeat like we did last year and take the win again. At the end of the day, it's all about um, it's all about the British Point Championship, obviously, but then it's all to qualify for the Europeans at the end of the year. And the, the highest points leader at the end of the year qualifies for that. And then we go in, this year it's in Sweden, so hopefully we can lead the points and go to Sweden. You've done some changes, yeah? Yeah, no, as you can see, um, we've got uh, individual fuel tanks for each engine now. That's purely simple. One, to save a bit of weight. Two, the old fuel tank was in the middle of the engine, so any work that you had to do on the engines, you had to lift the fuel tank out of the way, drain all the fuel out of it, whereas now we can lift one engine off with the fuel tank, the ignition and everything together and have it off in 10 minutes and then put another one on. So as the two and a half tonne light modifieds get warmed up in the closed pit area, we have some demonstrations from a couple of 950 kilogram A-class mini modifieds. These are usually powered by a single supercharged V8 motor. First out on track is Reloaded, driven by Paul Haylock. Lots of power and a relatively light machine and pulling a lighter sledge it always means that these are fierce handling machines. A 101.04 metres for Paul. Next man out, Paul Pacey driving Red Rooster. Anything up to 2,000 horsepower for some of these machines. And in this case, it's getting too bouncy. Paul back in off the power. Well, for 58.74 metres. So on to the two and a half tonne light modifieds. We heard from Dan Whittingham earlier, but first out today is Ian Shirley driving the night. Two supercharged V8 motors on board and a much heavier sledge. Backing up to the sledge to be coupled up. Green flag. Lots of hesitation there. Bouncing all over the place. You won't be happy with that one. 
We caught up with Ian to see what happened. Well, the combination of, I think, the track conditions were a little bit slippy at the, at the start, and probably, probably too much, too much wheel speed, maybe. But he didn't, he didn't. The wheels didn't lock in at all at the start. And I just felt as if, if we, you need to get them to lock in to get the front end to start to rise, and he didn't want to do it as normal. So as I, as I shut off, he decided he wanted to get gripped in a little bit, and I just caught the throttle wrong. And once you get it wrong, it, 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 you don't have many seconds to decide what you want to do. And I couldn't quite work out where to shut the throttle off without probably thinking about damage as well. But luckily for Ian, as Tess Buller, he'll be able to come back out for a second attempt. Next out on track is Mark Pacey driving on the limit. Again, two supercharged V8 motors, but a different configuration, this time back to back, which Mark feels gives better airflow. Looks more steady off the line than the night. Still a bit of a bounce. And he's been dragged down well before the end. A final distance of 76.16 metres. And I don't think they'll be particularly happy with that one. Jim Whitecross now with Gator. Oh, problems there. Unfortunately, he can't find reverse, so no pull today. Final machine out in the class is Dan Whittingham with Aftermath. Dan won the championship last year and he'll be looking to repeat that. Two supercharged V8s again, same layout as the night. Green flag, sounding so powerful. Lots of wheel speed, lots of revs. A super pull there. 90.8 metres. So, test puller Ian and Shirley back out again for his second attempt with the night. Can he improve on the 58.94 from his first attempt? Remember, he needs 90 metres or more to force a pull off with aftermath. I'm sure he's made a few balance changes after that first run and looking so much better this time out. Oh, it's going to be close. But there's the chequered flag that he needs to pass, but not quite. 86.32 means second place. But he'll be pleased that he's just a few metres away from Aftermath's performance. Well, it's a fan another fantastic summer's day here. We've got the barbecue out for breakfast. Last night was equally fantastic. It's first win of the season, so you're you're on the way. Yeah, no, last night was a good run. We uh, tractor was just balanced right. The track was in good condition. Yeah, we had a good run, please. Competition getting closer is good all the time because it makes it tighter and more fun. And when you win, it's uh, it's a you know it's a bigger thing. We're trying new things every time we run down the track. It's um, Sometimes it's for the best, sometimes it's not for the best. But uh, I think we got it all together and ran quite well last night. So as we move into late evening, we've seen the limited pro stocks, but now it's time for the pro stocks with bigger engines and up to 2,000 horsepower. And after an incredibly close finish, the class was won last year by John Eccles. So it's time to move on to the pro stocks now, another exciting class in the British Championship. And here again, the first round at Kirkbride and our current British champion, John. Does that feel good to hear that? Yeah, it's set a long while coming, is that, Ted? And a big thanks to all the team. Yeah, we were, it was very close at the end, but we got there by one point. So, yes, we were very, very happy. Brilliant. And I've seen on your social media, John, you know, you, you, you constantly moving forward. Even though you're the British champion, you've had it all in pieces, strip back, start again. Tell the people at home a little bit about what you've done to the engine to try and move that a little bit further along to, to, to retain that British championship. Well, what we've done, we've got different elements in the pump with slightly more fuel, a bigger turbo, complete new chassis from start to finish and a complete new fuel system on it so, oh, so just 10 minutes of a job uh, we've probably got we think since last season about 5,000 hours in it so lads have worked again really hard big thanks to all lads we, we just hope we're gonna have some teething problems Ted we know that all we want if we can come away this weekend with some good runs get some good data on computer we'll be happy with that 
Okay, for the category pro stock, basically there has to have been 150 manufactured uh, in, in serial production. You can update the hood work according to the latest models, but the hood work and the engine and what you're running inside must be consistent with the brand. So we're running a Valtra here, Valtra engine in there, Valtra uh, hood work for the latest T4 series. What you can do then is start to do some modifications within the tractor. The capacity on the engine is 510 cubic inches, just over 8.3 litres. So if we look at iSpare here, for example, you'll find that it's got a stock engine, the diesel class with a single turbocharger on it. So big turbocharger, we're allowed to intercool the engines. Big injection pump on this side here. Uh, large turbocharger, lots of cold air, lots of fuel, and uh, hopefully we get some uh, performance from the tractor. The engine block here, for example, you could drop that into a current day T4 series uh, tractor from production. Uh, we're allowed to make modifications to, uh, for, for example, specially designed uh, connecting rods we use in here. We use a standard crankshaft, we use standard bearings. Cylinder heads also have to be OEM standard, but we're allowed to alter them for flow, for porting. Um, as far as torque, we're not really looking for that because it's, uh, we're looking for a friction grip to spin the wheels on there. But horsepower-wise, we think we're somewhere about 2,000, 2,000 2,250, something like that. As we heard from John Eccles earlier, he's been making improvements over the winter, so he'll be looking for more distance this year. First time out for the machine this season, so pretty much untested. What can he do? Well, not quite there yet, but as test puller, he can come out later on in the field if he can get it sorted out in time. Very impressive display, though. Next machine out is Diesel Dragon, driven by Gareth Jones. Busy building uh, a little compact diesel as well, um, which is a, a miniature version of this, so we've been busy with that. Um, we've rebuilt the engine on Diesel Dragon, though, um, but everything seems OK. So, uh, fingers crossed, I should have a bit more luck than we did here last year. Um, all was running well when we left home, and... Uh, Unfortunately, we snapped a fuel element in the pump last year, but um, all's good this time. Uh, fingers crossed, fuel pump's all been serviced, so nothing major in development, but all hunky-dory and running real well, so uh, we'll see. Well, we will see. Well, a bit of a faff getting on boost for the first time. But he's there now. Wheels are up in the air. This is looking like a strong run. Look at him go! And yes, 94.34 metres, that's a full pull for Diesel Dragon, and that's the distance to beat. Ted Nicholson now with Rough Justice. Rough Justice is always one of the most competitive and consistent tractors. In past years, he's competed all round Europe against some of the best tractors on the continent. Well, he's got the green flag, slowly building the boost to get those turbos singing. And, oh, that wasn't expected. And Ted looks a bit perplexed on that one. So the next machine out is Big Boy's Toy. We imported it from the Netherlands. Yeah. It's now the first round of the British Championship here at Kirkbride. Hoping for big things. Well, we just hope we uh, get down the track, keep it in one piece, so we can have more fun out of it, really. We've had 12 months of pain, really, with no enjoyment, but we just hope it does well today and comes off the end of the track in one piece. Well, the tractor's driven today by co-owner Simon Neem. As Gary said, they've had a lot of rebuilding work to do after last year's blow-up. I think they've got it sorted now. It's very different from the other Pro Stocks with its V8 diesel engine, and it is flying. Yes, a full pull, 97.38, showing just how it should be done. And that means we have a pull-off. That was such a perfect pull. We're going to have to watch it again. Bit of a wiggle on there, but it's not slowing him down at all. Perfect delivery of power. Make a wish. 
And here's Ice Bear now. Andy Miller told us a little bit about the technicalities of Pro Stock earlier on. And he also sometimes takes on the driving duties of this amazing tractor. But today it's Mike Simmons at the wheel. The team were very disappointed to lose out on the championship last year. And they'll be trying everything to get on it in 2018. And this is looking like a great start. Very, very smooth. Yes, they've just done it, 90.07 metres, so they're into the pull-off. And the final tractor out in the class will be Panic, driven by Paul Haylock. Brand new tractor to you? Uh, yeah, yeah, brought over from the States last year, yes. So we'll uh, see how we get on today. Uh, yep, that's a TW back end and uh, gearbox, and then a uh, Brazilian Ford block. It's dyno before it come over, uh, just over 1800. But there's still a lot of work to be done yet, Paul. So John Eccles has done a bit of spannering in the pits and he's back out. Remember, he was test puller, so he gets that second attempt. And he's slowly building up that boost. But well, here we go. That's not good. That sounded very, very expensive. Such a disappointing way to start a season. Well, let's hope we see him out again before the end of the year. But I have my doubts after that fireball. Good grief. So that means three machines in the pull-off, but with the time going on and the lights disappearing fast, it was decided to run the pull-off on Sunday morning. Sunday brought another blazingly hot day with cloudless skies. So as the three pro stocks assemble in the closed pit area, we're going to take a look at the couple of demo pulls from the truck class. Now this is a truck show as well as a tractor pull show, so very appropriate. First out on the track is a Ruddy Lightning driven by Jeff Rudd and ultimately netting a distance of 66.53 metres. All the way from the Netherlands now, it's Rocking Horse, driven by Aaron Kolbach and Airy Van Tool. They take their truck pulling very seriously over there with no expense spared on this machine. Wow. And going all the way to a full pull. I guess being specifically designed to haul heavy loads helps these machines get that heavy sledge down the track. Back to the pro stocks then. Have they come up with changes to their machines after last night's pull? The incredible temperatures this weekend have certainly made for a far drier track than we usually get in Britain. And the track surface has a huge effect on how these machines are set up. Yeah, so far, a uh, nice run last night, very pleased. It's nice to get down the end of the track at Kirkbride. Uh, we've had a couple of years where we've had a, some challenges. And uh, yeah, tractor seems okay, went well last night. Uh, the crowd enjoyed it. And yeah, we'll um, we'll look, see what we can do with the pull-off. Might tweak a few things, see what we can do. A little bit more RPM, Mike didn't uh, have enough off the line, but we will this time. Really pleased with last night. And uh, yeah, it went very, very well, to be fair. Uh, got off to a good start. Unfortunately, uh, John Knuckles had a bit of misfortune, but Unfortunately, that's tractor pull in. I've been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Uh, but yeah, we are into the pull-off, so uh, good straight run. A bit apprehensive today, but we'll see how it goes. Now, I understand you've been doing an awful lot of the rebuilding work and the tuning work. Yeah, along with a lot of help from people from Europe. Um, well, sounds like we've got it right, hopefully. It's a bit of a lottery. I've done as I've been told, really. I haven't really had a lot of input into tuning it. The lads in Holland have help me with that and I've learned a lot off them so we hopefully develop it from here. So a few names missing from this pull-off unfortunately. First man out is Gareth Jones with Diesel Dragon. Gareth's been gradually improving his tractor over the years to a point where 
it's now really competitive. So what will he set as the target in the pull-off? Well, you can see that it's a far heavier sledge now. Good, smooth, strong pull there. 77.18, that's the mark for everyone else to aim for. Big Boys Toys next, driven by Simon Neem. there oh and another but he seems to have recovered going strong now and he just passes the checkered flag so that puts him in the lead 78.02 meters for big boys toy our final machine out in the pull-off will be ice bear driven by mike simmons a lot of experience in this team having competed all over Europe very regularly and doing so again this year. It's sounding very, very clean and strong. He's going all the way. And he takes the win with 82.63 metres. That's five metres up on the second place distance. Good pull. So as the final points are worked out, an out of competition test pull for Paul Haylock with panic. That's good to see, going much better than last time. So that gives us our final distances and the points at the end of round one of Pro Stock. Ice Bear leading the table. Brilliant start to the year for the team there. Back to Saturday night and it's demonstration time with the Superstocks and Jeff Ashcroft's Red Fever. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Jeff Ashcroft from the Clark Pulling Team and I compete in Superstock with Peter Clark's tractor called the Red Fever. Behind me today we've got a couple of examples of Superstock tractors that we're going to compete against later and the Superstock rules are a little more open than what you get with Pro Stock. Um, while we can burn diesel or methanol fuels, we're also allowed a maximum of four turbochargers in three pressure stages. We're also allowed to run 30.5 inch 32 uh, rear tyres, but we have to contain it all within a standard engine block for that tractor. So for us, we run internationals and that is a DT466 block. There is also a cubic inch capacity limit, which is 650 cubes. So we're really trying to extract uh, an awful lot more power than some of the diesel tractors and rumours of four and a half to 5,000 horsepower from these alcohol engines uh, uh, can be well substantiated. So a lot of the Superstock tractors now have moved away from cast iron um, components, whereas a farm tractor would have had a cast iron rear end, cast iron transmission housing. We've moved away from cast iron, like many of our contemporaries here, we're running space frame chassis, specially made rear ends with planetary uh, axles, and uh, this allows us to create more movable weight around the tractor. We run at three and a half tonnes, or 3,500 kilos wet weight, and the more horsepower we make, the harder it is to keep the front end closer to the track. So by moving to a space frame chassis and creating what we call a component tractor, we can get more weight on the nose and create better balance. In terms of OEM parts, well, there's very few on a Superstock tractor. We run a factory-produced engine block. It's had an awful lot of work done to it, but inside that is a billet crank, special aluminium rods, short skirt racing pistons, all aluminium. We also have a billet aluminium cylinder head, two valves, and an overhead cam design. We're looking at six, six and a half thousand RPM from these motors. And over 4,000 horsepower on tap for final distance of 89.15 metres for Red Fever.
So we've heard a little from Jeff Ashcroft on the inner workings of a Superstock machine, but we've, we've two that have come over from the Netherlands here on this team. Rob, thank you. Welcome for joining us to Kirkbride. You're welcome. We are great to be here. Uh, and you're, you brought two Superstock machines. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about them. Uh, one super uh, Superstock from uh, Team Van der Waal, and the other super is uh, Superstock from Team Omen. We built a new one for Team Omen, and this is our maximum risk, where we try to make a lot of horsepower and we try to pull on the podium. But yeah, what we can do is only our best. You were very successful last year with, with this machine? Last year we did, but uh, in this season we make some small mistakes maybe. Yeah. Other, maybe a little bit bad luck, I don't know. Any changes over the winter or have you kept it the same? Yeah, we changed a few things inside. We make a new billet crank and we change the front axle. So we lose a little bit of weight on the front and the, the weight on the front is very important. So we, we need to be, uh, put back something. Late on Saturday night now, and it's almost dark. Four machines to compete, and next out is Terminator, driven by Linda Uman. Really heavy sledge setting for this class, and Terminator is pulled down at 89.76 metres, which beats Red Fever's 89.15. Next machine is Old and Macalar Zappo, driven by Theo Bruchweef. Much higher wheel speeds from these machines compared to the Pro Stocks. Well, he's flying down the track. And finally stopped by that heavy sledge at 86.08. Lovely methanol flames there for the crowd. Final man out is a Rob van der Waal, who we heard from earlier with maximum risk. Another really successful tractor that competes all across Europe most weekends. Oh, this is a great pull. And he takes the win with an 89.97. It's back to the BTPA action with the Super Farm class and the Super Pull-Off. Hot day yesterday. and You went down the track twice, two good pulls, and it's still not over. We've got a Super Pull. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, I couldn't believe the second sledge setting in the pull-off there. Um, we got to kind of about the 70, 80 meter mark and uh, I thought, you know, doesn't look like we're going to stop us. So very interesting. We've got two tractors through a super pool. Fantastic. Only the second time in uh, my last seven years of pooling that it's happened, but it's good, you know. Yesterday, uh, my tractor run the hottest it's ever run and the second pool and the pool off setting, um, we were very close on 100 degrees with the engine water temperature there. <laughs> Yesterday, two tractors made full pulls in the pull-off, so they're facing off today in the super pull-off. And this is Martin Ross. I'm sure they've got a much heavier sledge set in today for them, but Martin's still going well. 89.30 is the distance. Second man in the super pull is David Todd with Red Bull. No. Oh dear, 19.09 metres for him and the wing goes to Martin Ross with Diesel Ross. Well, Martin, very pleased to take the win here at Kirkbride. A look then at the final results and points for the Super Farm class after two rounds of competition. Back with the Super Stocks now for Sunday's non-points competition. And no doubt a lighter sledge set in than last night to give them a chance for a pull-off. Well, the first tractor out is Terminator, driven again by Linda Uman. These machines all compete regularly right across Europe in the Metus Euro Cup. And although they're not competing for points at this event, it will certainly give them a good chance to try out different settings and make changes to the machines accordingly. There's just no way to test these machines outside of a proper event. So build in the boost, but no smoke here as these tractors are powered by methanol rather than diesel. And another storming run from Terminator, this time going way past the full pull line. 104.09 is the distance and shifting a huge amount of dirt as it goes down the track. Second machine out is Olden Makala Zappo, again with Theo at the controls. Well, green flag down track. 
Seems to be labouring a bit though. Oh, and that's it. Just 22.95 metres, so no pull-off today for Zappo. And I think maybe there's a few flames under the hood. Hard to see where methanol's burning. Well, with Jeff Ashcroft's red fever unable to take to the track today due to mechanical issues, the last machine out will be Rob van der Waal in maximum risk. You're looking at Europe's best here. This was the machine that won the 2017 ETPC European Championship and also the Metus Euro Cup Series. And they've already made a good start in three international events they've competed at so far this year. So what have you got for us today? Well, it looks like yet another great run, 104.9. So we will have a pull-off between Terminator and Maximum Risk. Going straight into that pull-off with Terminator out first. Looks like another storming run here. Ninety-four point five two meters, but will that be enough? And a little bit of fluid coming out from somewhere. So, what can maximum risk do? What a stance! Super smooth. This one looks like it's going to be close. He just sneaks it there, 96.76 metres to take the win. Out of competition now, but a test run for Olden Makala Zappo here to close the event. So fantastic weather and some amazing BTPA pull in action. The next event's in just a couple of weeks' time down at the Great Eccleston Show and we look forward to seeing you there.